Hey everyone, welcome back to another White Out Survival Math video. Today, we are going to look at how to use your gems effectively. If you have been reading how good the lucky wheel is in the game, you will notice everyone saying to go for lucky wheel, but just good, how good is it? And is there any other good deal to spend gems on? If these are the questions you have, stick around, because I've got some math to share with you. Gems are the premium currency in the game, and they can be a game changer if used correctly. From speeding up builds to buying rare items, they can boost your progress. But gems are scarce, so knowing when and where to spend them is key to getting ahead. This is why it is important to look at the return on investment for the gems you spend in the game. Similar to the previous video on pack percentage, all items will be normalized to compare them equally. First, let's look at the Lucky Wheel. Lucky Wheel event occurs every two weeks on the second day of Hall of Chief, King of Icefield, or State of Power. You can use gems to spin the wheel. Every spin will give you a random chance of receiving items and upon a set amount of spins you have done, it will also reward you with milestone rewards, which includes hero shards. So let's work out how many shards you should expect to get from the lucky wheel and how lucky or unlucky you can get when you are spinning the wheel. Here is a probability table for each of the items you can get from the lucky wheel. The expected number of shards you can get from each spin is 5 shards times 4.37% plus 1 shard times 32.81% which gives 0.5466 shards per spin. This means if we do 120 spins, we are expected to get around 65 to 66 shards from spinning the wheel alone and the milestone rewards will give us 115 shards. Therefore, we are expecting a total of 180 shards from 120 spins. If you look at the 95% confidence interval for the number of shards we will get from spinning 120 times, it's around 170 to 191 shards. So if you are very unlucky and get less than 170, Know that we all have bad days sometimes and that is okay. But if you get lucky and get more than 191 shards, please know that we are all coming after you. Let's move on to the cost of spinning the wheel 120 times. Each spin costs 1500 gems and if you do 10 spins at a time, one of the spin will be free. So the cost of each 10 spin is 13,500 gems. We need to do 10 spins 12 times, so the total cost in gems will be 13,500 times 12, which is 162,000 gems to complete 120 spins. Something worth noting is we will always get 3 lucky chips when lucky wheel comes around, and we will get an additional 5 lucky chips during SVS, so the cost will go down even further. If we now work out the cost of gems for each shard, we get 900 gems per hero shard. Some of you may be wondering, what about 70 spins? Well, let's also do math for that. 70 spins will yield an expected number of 38.3 shards from spinning the wheel. The milestone reward will give you 65 shards. So in total, we are expecting around 103 hero shards from 70 spins. The cost of spinning the wheel 70 times is 13.5 thousand times 7, which gives 94,500 gems in total. The gems per shard are therefore approximately 970 gems per shard. This is around a 1-2% to difference between 120 spins and 70 spins. Which means whether you do 120 or 70 spins, there is no noticeable difference in terms of gems efficiency. However, Lucky Wheel only comes once every 2 weeks, so for people who have good amount of gems saved up, you should always go for 120 spins. 
but for people who only have enough for 70 spins, you should not skip until the next one as you'll run into opportunity cost for holding the gems in your backpack. Here are the packs for Lucky Wheel in Australian dollar. The pack percentage is very deceiving in these packs because it is fully inflated with a bunch of garbage items. We will only need these items in the early game, around the time before we hit Fire Crystal levels. Once our top 5 heroes are level 80 and all mythic hero skills are maxed, the value of this pack drop all the way down to 600% which is just as bad as the regular packs. This is why I do not recommend any of these packs and we should just save our gems from other packs or in-game events. Hall of Hero is a weekly recurring shop from Sunday to Tuesday. It offers hero shards from the previous generation up to the current generation. And for widgets, it only offers previous generations. Each current generation's hero shard will cost 10 of the Mark of Valor to obtain, which is equivalent to 1500 gems per hero shard. The widgets of the previous generation will cost either 18 or 16 Mark of Valor to obtain, which is either 2700 gems or 2400 gems per widget respectively. This is still very good compared to the original cost of previous widgets, which is 4000 gems per widget of previous generation. Unlocking the extra construction queue for 2 days with 1000 gems is one of the best early investments you can make. Extra construction queue is theoretically a 48 hours construction speed up in terms of growth, this is equivalent to 38.4 thousand gems worth of construction speed up, which is an insane value in the early game. The same thing goes for the extra construction queue pack. It is a good pack for the early game. It will take around 80 to 90 days to hit furnace 30, so this permanent construction queue will give around 42.5 thousand gems worth of value, which is around 2800% value for the queue alone. However, in the later stage of the game, the extra construction queue is pretty much useless because you either max out all your buildings or you don't have enough fire crystals to continue upgrade your buildings. This is also why Zimmerman is not a good hero to invest in because the construction speed bonus quickly becomes obsolete. Activating 30 days VIP is usually a pretty good deal for 10,000 gems from VIP 4 onwards because at VIP 4, we start getting one purple hero shot every day. Each is valued at 1,000 gems, so over 30 days, we will get 30,000 gems worth of purple shards on top of the VIP benefits, which includes 10% construction speed bonus. Although this construction speed bonus is obsolete once we hit fire crystal level, in the early game this will help a lot in conjunction with the extra construction queue. The benefit of VIP gets even more at level 6, which will get another march queue. This extra march queue is just invaluable. It will help with a lot of events in the game including the Frostfire Mine, Bear Hunt, Crazy Joe, Beast Hunt Day for SVS, Resource Gathering Day for Alliance Showdown and SVS, you get the point. Another big spike up in value is VIP level 7. From this level, we will start getting Mythic Shards, which are valued at 5000 gems per shard. So over 30 days, we will get 150,000 gems worth of Mythic Shards for just 10,000 gems. For a more realistic comparison, I will only be counting the purple and gold hero shards and ignore the hero skill books and the buff you get from VIP. By the way, if you are considering buying the monthly VIP card just to activate the VIP, and you have a lot of stamina cans that you can't finish, then I definitely do not recommend this card. For more details, you can check out the other video I made, the link is in the description below. The VIP shop has a lot of useful items selling at a discounted price. However, 
What we can buy from the shop depends on the level of VIP we have. In this video, I will assume that the VIP shop is fully unlocked for analytical purposes. I personally classify the stamina cans, 100 gear, XP, and essence stones are the must buy items. For F2P players, the stamina cans are usually accumulated from leveling up intel levels. After that, the main source is from the hunter's pouch by hunting bees during Gina's revenge event. So being able to buy 5 more cans at a third of the price each week is invaluable for F2P players. These stamina cans will be very important for both FCSB stay and mercenary prestige event. Essence stones and hero gear XP are for long term investment, which means they will never one day be obsolete unlike hero shards. Next down the list are the mythic hero shards and speed ups. The mythic shards are at 50% price, so they are quite valuable. Speed up items are valuable because general speed ups can be used for research speed up, which will allow us to get more upgrades completed earlier and provide us more stats to compete with others. This in a way is similar to chief gear, charms, in that we are increasing our combat stats. But this is under the assumption that we have enough steel to continuously upgrade our research tech and we are getting bottlenecked by research time cost. The rest of the items in the shop are situational or not recommended. For the arena, we can add more attempts by spending gems for up to 5 additional attempts. The cost for each additional attempt will progressively increase one after another, starting from 100 gems all the way up to 800 gems. The first two additional attempts are very valuable, regardless of winning or losing, as the items we get from attempting will pay for themselves. For example, here we got 7000 hero XP, a common hero gear worth of 10 hero gear XP, and a hero skill manual. Whether the third additional attempt onwards is valuable for us or worth it will depend on whether we are pushing for higher rankings. We can refresh the trucks in the Tanja trade route event when we run out of the tickets to refresh. The cost for refreshing the truck starts from 100 gems and each subsequent refresh will cost 100 additional gems up to 500 gems. This is usually a good deal as you can turn a truck that looks like this into something that looks like this with just 1500 gems. The workout of the difference in equivalent gens for the items in these two trucks is shown here. A big difference for just 1500 gems. For alliance mobilization, the first extra attempts each day is free and the next three are 50 gems each. It's a good deal to have three extra attempts with just 150 gems. This will help us to complete all four exclusive bonus missions to help the alliance and personal score. What is the best way to spend gems really depends on the situation we are in. For example, Lucky Wheel has an insane value but in Gen 1, Zimmerman is not really a beneficial hero and VIP activation will also depend on the VIP level you are in. If we assume all items are valuable, then the order will go with something that looks like this. This plot shows the equivalent discount we get from using the gems in the manner specified on the left. For example, Activating VIP 7 means we will get 30 mythic hero shards, so the discount we get is 1 minus 10,000 gems from activating VIP divided by the total gem value of 30 mythic shards, which gives us a total of 93% discount from the full price. This is an extremely high discount and if we look at the gem's effective value, we are getting 1500% more shards with activating VIP 7. What is even crazier is using 1000 gems to activate the extra construction queue, giving us around 3840% more speed up than the full price speed up. 
Lucky Wheels, on the other hand, is giving us around 550 more shards, which is around 3 times less cost-effective compared to activating VIP 7. This means if you are looking to upgrade your heroes while you don't have VIP 7 activated, you should definitely prioritize activating it before saving for Lucky Wheel. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I'll be answering all the questions. If you found the content of this video helpful, it would be great if you could give me a thumbs up for this video. It will help the YouTube algorithm. And if you would like to discuss more, consider joining our Discord server. The link is in the description below. We have a lot of people working on the game analytics and testings. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.